My name is Colin Strickland and I race for Meteor X Giordana X Allied Racing. My name is Michael Sheehan. My name is Kevin Gerkins. I started this racing program in 2017, at which point it was just myself racing U.S. domestic uh, criteriums and road races and gravel races, and I had a small squad that I hit the Red Hook Crit circuit with as well. I first transitioned into fixed gear criterium and just kind of got a taste for how creative you could be with bike racing and just running a team in general and how it's more than just results and that it's more about the, your experience and sharing your experience and really putting on a show. Personalities are one of the biggest challenges in any kind of workplace scenario. I think when you spend a lot of time with people, things that otherwise wouldn't really you know, would get glossed over can be a little amplified, so that's always a challenge is just to stay positive and stay constructive and just remember that we're in this together. That's the constant challenge is just remembering like, let's just focus on what's good for the, good for the, cl the whole tribe. Colin is an interesting cat and I think that he would uh, probably agree with that begrudgingly. He's, um, He's, he's intense, he's super competitive, but he also really looks out for his own. I don't really understand how Kevin actually functions as a living human being. He's hilarious, he will destroy you up any hill and then drink you under a table the second the ride is over. Well, what team were you on last year? Last year was Elevate KHS, so more of your standard pro cycling team. Renewing a contract with Elevate was an option. It wasn't quite as many options for racing. When you have a roster of 12 people and only six can be selected to go to a certain race, that means sometimes you're sitting at home and I want to race as much as I can get. Um, I like to get out and travel. That's one of the biggest reasons I do this job. With this opportunity on Meteor, I, I get that every weekend if I want. I've definitely had dreams of kind of testing my metal and my physiology in the, you know, the international top stage, which would be the European pro racing, world tour racing. But the door was never open to me just because of the, the timing and that I, the fact that I started racing at the age of uh, 25. And I was never on the trajectory or making it onto the feeder teams to get to a European team. So I'm pretty happy with the route I've taken. And it's been, it's just been a really fun ride. I've just been focusing on being thankful for having any kind of niche in cycling. So my first kind of like serious gig racing was with Elbows Racing. And then eventually Colin and I ended up on Elbows together. First uh, technically professional gig was Jelly Belly once I graduated. When I left Jelly Belly, I was really, really burnt out on cycling, I kind of, I definitely hit the point of diminishing returns. I, I think it was Belgian Waffle Ride last year where I was like, oh, I love bikes again. It seems like American road racing has hit a bit of a stalling point and it's losing a bit of the momentum that it had in years past and it does seem like uh, gravel racing is filling this void for a lot of people in the United States. I think most people who do these events find them extremely fulfilling, you know, not just about the results but also just about the taking away a, a really fun experience and have, finding a lot of kindred spirits. That brings me back to my uh, fundamental kind of approach to racing, which is that we're in show business. You know, us going out and suffering alone in the wind, you know, in a desolate place with nobody watching is really kind of inconsequential. So we have to do something entertaining to get people excited about what we're doing and get them to really give a shit, to tune in and follow our adventures. Uh, otherwise, we're not really doing anything valuable. Anyone who wants to ride the front can, except for us, like there's just no reason to. You go through Ramona, and then when you hit Ramona, that's when we're getting up to Black's Canyon. You know, if, you, if you're with guys who you're worried about on the descent, or on the, sorry, on the climb, then this is your section. If you're with guys who you're confident with, just save it. 
That should be it. Try and stick together ready. as long as possible. Mm -hmm. We believe in you. <laughs> I remember specifically it was 2016 and I quit my job. I wanted to race my bike more. I decided it was about time that I need to make that jump off the cliff. I want to do this full time. A good friend of mine wanted to give me some guidance because he knew my frustration with trying to break into the pro cycling world. And he told me to go out there and steal their money. Anytime there's a stage win or anytime there's not even money necessarily, like agitate the race. At like mile 90, so many different things happened up until then, but that was where we hit the, the, the sandy bandy section. And I had Ted King in front of me and Peter Stetna in front of him. And I just asked them both to let me around the side and just tried to light it up as much as I could. As we channeled towards the first pinch point into the dirt, uh, and it was immediately a selection formed right out of the first dirt section. And we got all three of our riders into it. Up one of the early climbs, Justin Owen, who's on um, Arapaho and Cappy, he rode a pretty hard tempo up this climb and I was on his wheel and I was having a hard time and turns out the person behind me was having an even harder time because when we got to the top uh, Justin and I had a 30 second gap at least so accidentally got on a breakaway and Michael had done his work and kind of pulled off the back at that point and I had a hard tumble and compromised some of my equipment after that we went into some more dirt sections and Sadly, I just crashed right off the back of that group. I tried to chase back on and um, yeah, just went so stupidly hard to try and chase back on and crashed again like five miles later. So 
had a couple of shitty moments there. Ended up going through the final kind of sandy dirt sh section in about sixth place and just went right off the side of the cliff at one point. Landed uh, about 10 feet down in some trees <laughs> on top of my bike and I don't even think I really processed it at the moment. I was just again, just kind of like, all right, I guess the next step is to get myself out of this and keep going. Yeah, eventually crossed the line by myself, sixth place, and um, I just, it, again, like some people were nice enough to help me out, move my bike around for me, hand me a beer, tell me where the potato chips were. I couldn't really be happier with how we did. It, end of the day, it sucks that Colin and Kevin had some crashes, but that's bike racing. Having all three of us in the lead group from pretty much the second the selection was made speaks to just us going in with a level of preparedness to the race. And other races can really come to the Belgian Waffle Ride and try to mimic it in as many ways as possible from just the ethos of, look, we're out on a parade on bicycles as they declare at the beginning of the race. You better look out for each other. You better help each other when you need help. They discourage the every man or every woman for themselves attitude, which a lot of races not encourage, but they don't discourage it. So it tends to be like, you know, the vibe is win at all costs. And this race is not about winning at all costs. This is about, you know, you want to be the strongest rider, but you sure as hell better not be an asshole on the way. Um, all manner of things. I just watched, I watched that homecoming Beyonce movie, which was pretty <laughs> fucking, pretty fucking impressive. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, I'm wondering if I, I was just thinking about talking about that one. It was like really What's impressive. The athleticism and then also like the, the training they did for that. Oh,